know what it what it means. Okay, so we're talking about six databases, and roughly you can divide them into two major classes. There are uh, three, I think, that are really meant to provide information to the regular person, to the lay person. You know, this is uh, you know what you would use if you're trying to find information for yourself. You know, for a family member, uh, if you want to find out more about a chronic uh, condition or prescription that you're considering uh, uh, asking for, uh, you know, uh, magazines on the health, fitness, and medical field, uh, and then there are others that are really meant for the professional person, the researcher. Uh, students and that sort of thing. So we're going to talk about the ones that are meant for the lay person first. And the first one we've already seen is AHFS Consumer Medical Information. Okay, so the AHFS refers to the company that provide our publisher that provides this service, the American Society of Health System pharmacist. They are a recognized standard for providing uh, drug information uh, to patients. So what this database is, is you get articles that are written in non-technical language for the consumer. Uh, one uh, good thing about it is that many of the articles are able to be translated into Spanish. And those articles are prepared by real people as opposed to a computer or some other type of machine. Uh, the database is updated monthly besides articles on prescription drugs. Uh, it includes how-to articles for uh, using things uh, such as eye drops and inhalers. Another good thing about this database is that it identifies medications that have potential for adverse effects, especially on the elderly. You know, we hear about, you know, the population is getting older, baby boomers are retiring, and, you know, that brings a, a new need for information on a variety of topics. And so this is one way that, that this particular publisher is uh, responding to that need for more information. So it especially identifies those medications that should be avoided or that uh, should be used with caution in older adults 65 years of age or older. Now that's particularly important to me because I just turned 65 this year. So. Um, here is an example of what an article looks like. I did a search on the prescription drug glipicide. This is a medication that's often prescribed for those who are suffering from uh, diabetes. So here you see the article, uh, a fairly lengthy article. If we print it out, it would probably take two or three pages. Uh, you can use the content links there to kind of uh, uh, link to different parts if you don't want to read the entire article. The other uh, thing about this, uh, having the full text right there in front of you, is that there is an option you see there where it says, listen, if you click on that, then uh, someone reads that article to you. Um, also, there is a possibility that you can download the information to an MP3 player. Okay, so the next database we have that provides information for the uh, layperson is called Consumer Health Complete. And that's what its icon looks like on the EBSCO page. So Consumer Health Complete uh, 
Its focus is to support the information needs of patients and to foster an overall understanding of health-related topics. So it has a wide variety of topics and content that it covers, uh, all uh, key areas from mainstream medicine to uh, perspectives of complementary and holistic medicine. Of all the uh, databases that we're going to talk about that come from EBSCO, this is the one that kind of acts a little different. And we'll see that uh, later on in today's training. A lot of the information provided uh, comes in full text. That means you can uh, click on uh, the article itself without having to request it uh, from uh, us or from a different library. Um, <clears throat> the articles come from lots of different sources, uh, journals, which be kind of your more technical or research-oriented uh, periodicals, magazines, books, pamphlets. Uh, there are images and videos as well. There are also chapters from uh, health reference books and encyclopedias. For example, the American Medical Association Complete Medical Encyclopedia is one of the ones that they include articles and chapters from. This particular database is good because it has a special content section that's meant for teens and their parents. If you are a parent of a teenager, yeah, uh, been there. Uh, you know, they kind of become a different creature once they hit high school. Well, probably even middle school now. You know, about you know once they start the puberty, it's like they become a different creature. And that loving child who thought you were cool and knew everything and could solve every problem. You know, suddenly, you know, you are you know, an embarrassment, you know, uh, somebody they don't want to be seen with. So anyway, this, this particular database focuses especially on the relationship and the, uh, the things that teens are concerned about in terms of health and wellness. So uh, lots of articles on a variety of health topics, uh, from smoking to sexting is what I have in my notes. Dealing with anger, coping with divorce. There are articles that are aimed at the teen. So good for them, uh, uh, you know, told from their perspective. But then also on the other side, there are articles on how to talk to your teen about a subject. And sometimes uh, for those parents who are particularly worried, but you know, want to approach it in a healthy, uh, loving manner, but needs advice, this is a place you might could turn to for help. So in general, uh, you can see the subjects that are included there. Certainly it's not a, a complete list. Um, on the right hand side, you see a number of articles that are being worked on now that will be added. Uh, over the course of the next year. I think I read something about over 400 more uh, topics were being considered for uh, inclusion in this database. The link that you see there under the uh, title uh, is the website where you could go to see a full list of the subjects that are included there if you want to pre-use that. Okay, so our next uh, consumer or layperson database is called Health Source Consumer Edition, and that is what its icon looks like on the EBSCO page. Okay, so on this one, this database provides access to full text consumer health magazines and reference books. So the advantage here is that if you are very interested in health and fitness 
magazines and you subscribe to a lot of them, you may be able to save some money there by seeing if what you have subscribed to at home or even at work is included in this database. Because we're paying the price here at the State Library for the database. So if you can get the information you need by using the database uh, with your account from home or at work, you know, there's no point in you having you know, your own personal copy. Um, so um, this is the one that has uh, a variety of topics and subjects included in it. Uh, including specific diseases. And this is the one that has a little bit different look on its home page than the others. Um, so uh, its subjects include fitness, nutrition, diabetes, aging, women's health, children's health, and of course there are others. It includes clinical reference systems reports, um, which are special um, newsletters put out um, on various uh, topics and these are included in both English and Spanish. It also includes a medical dictionary as part of what you can access. So again you can take the link there to uh, see what uh, titles are included uh, in this database as well as a complete list of subjects. Okay, so from there we go to those that are meant for the medical and healthcare professional. So the first one of these we're going to look at is Medline, and that's what its icon looks like on the um, EBSCO page. So Medline is a product of the uh, United States National Library of Medicine. It's the premier bibliographic database. It contains more than 23 million references to journal articles in the life sciences, especially in biomedicine. Um, a distinct feature of this uh, database is that the records are indexed with the National Library of Medicine subject headings which are abbreviated M little e s h and I'm going to show you uh, that in a little bit. Uh, time coverage goes back uh, to right up to the end of World War II so from 1946 up to present time. The majority of the publications in Medline are scholarly journals. There are a few uh, newspapers, magazines, and newsletters included, um, but they are go before a panel and judge whether or not it is appropriate based on what the focus is of uh, Medline. Okay, so besides Medline, which kind of takes care of uh, biomedicine, we have Psychology and Behavioral Sciences Collection. This is a full text database that includes a lot of information that would be useful for psychologists, counselors, researchers, and students. Uh, this uh, database provides extensive coverage on a broad range of subjects in the fields of psychology, behavioral sciences, and related disciplines. Provides access to hundreds of full text journals. Uh, some of them are even in international. Provides particularly strong coverage in child and adolescent psychology and various areas of counseling. And the link you see there on the slide will give you more information about subject and title coverage. 
So uh, the last medical database we're going to cover today is PsycInfo. PsycInfo is the world's largest resource devoted to peer-reviewed literature in the behavioral, behavioral science, sciences and mental health. Now by peer review, that means that before things are included in this database, it goes in front of a, pan, a, a jury panel of experts that kind of review the information and uh, approve it for inclusion. You know, that's sort of like an extra layer so that you know that this information has already been uh, looked at by experts and approved. Sometimes uh, when you are doing your own research on a particular uh, project <coughs> or if you're working on an advanced degree in school and you're, you're working on a paper or you know, something of that sort, you know, you'll want to use only peer-reviewed uh, sources because you know that information has been vetted and considered to be of value. Um, okay. So that that was your brief introduction to the six, and remember there are seven, but we're not talking a lot about CINAHL today. Because EBSCO provides access to all of those through the Kentucky Virtual Library, really working on searching and accessing the information and then kind of saving it for later use, all works about the same, which is kind of really good because once you learn all those things uh, about EBSCO searching and saving and accessing information, once you've learned it, you've learned it for about seven or eight different databases. So we're going to talk briefly about how you search in these databases. Okay. So here is what Consumer Health Complete looks like. Remember earlier I said that it was the one that had kind of a different look when you clicked on it. So this is what you get. Um, so at the top, you can uh, type in whatever it is you're looking for in the uh, box next to where it says find, or you can use the uh, different links there uh, based on uh, the type of information or source of information uh, based on uh, you know what you're looking for. So if you're just looking for evidence-based reports, you could put in your term and click on that and then your list of results would be everything in that category. If you are wanting uh, you know magazine, and you could type in your search term and click on the news and magazines and all your results would be from there. If you are just in a position where you would set up a time maybe once a month where you would go in to see what's going on, what's new, or perhaps if you're interested in one of the uh, full text uh, periodicals or magazines that you know come up, in Consumer Health Complete, then you could just uh, use the links there to uh, its list of topics or uh, periodicals like you see there, yoga, men's fitness. <coughs> um, there's a shortcut way you can use the alphabet links at the top uh, to get to a specific disease. So lots of different ways to access information, uh, either by typing in what you're looking for or using one of the uh, clicks there for browsing. Okay, 
Most of the other EBSCO databases, when you click on that icon to open it up, is going to look like this on your screen, on this slide. You know, you get a lot of white space, some boxes to type, and then lots of options for you to check. So uh, here, what you do in the red box on the slide, this is where you would type in the terms that you are wanting information on. Uh, if you aren't sure about the specific name, uh, for example, if you put in diabetes, and you can't remember which one you need, type 1 or type 2, you can uh, click on the suggested subject headings in order to get some help to locate the exact term that you need. Everything underneath that red box where the green arrows are, are options that you can use to either broaden your search or narrow it. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see where it says Search Modes and Expanders. And essentially, those are the things that can help you enlarge or broaden your search. You have options to include words that may be related to what you've typed. It may include the actual text or search in the actual full text of what you're looking for. It looks for related words, so uh, it would include related words would include words that have alternate spellings. For example, if you wanted information on tumors in America, we spell tumors T-U-M-O-R-S, right? And in England, they spell it T-U-M-O-U-R-S. So if we made that click to apply. Um, related words are, uh, yeah, that would pick up those alternate international spellings or would pick up uh, plurals of words that uh, we, are terms we might be searching for. And of course, on the uh, limit side, where it sees limit your results, those are where you can pick things like the language that you're interested in. If you only want things in English, if you're only interested in one source, maybe you want magazines instead of journals or newspapers instead of the others. It's where you can set your time. Uh, certainly if you're doing research about what's newest in medicine or treatment for a particular disease, you'd want something where the uh, date range, you know, was probably not more than five years old. So you have those options. So you can use as many as you want. You know, if you, you know, click every limited filter and, you know, you don't get any results, then you can start removing them. Usually the more you click, the less results you have. But sometimes you can click so many that you end up with nothing. So you kind of have to, you know, think about it and, uh, you know, figure out what is a high, higher priority for you in terms of limitations. Okay. So we mentioned this earlier. When you aren't sure of how your subject or topic might be listed in a database. There are some options that can help you. So here, uh, you see I did a search on aging. So, I'm, you know, I know that there are lots of aspects to aging. Maybe I'm not exactly sure what it is I'm looking for about aging. I can click on right above the box where I typed in aging. I can click on suggest subject terms and then click on where it says headings up at the top in the oval. 
And this will get me the screen that you see down at the bottom. You can see down at the bottom in that light blue bar that's clipped, it says aging. So it takes the word I type, typed in and it gives me all the subheadings are, that would be included as part of aging. Or it would tell me, you know, if I want this, then use this term. Those are kind of down at the bottom of the list. There's an option called explode, and it doesn't mean, you know, that that's a bomb. What you do is if you have the option to explode, then you get what's in this blue column here, which is essentially is all the different um, subheadings that might come under um, aging. And so you have the option to pick one of those. You see in that blue column you have kind of what looks like a little file at the end of the term. And if you hover your cursor over that, then you sort of get a, a summary note or description note. So you kind of know what that's talking about. And as you make your clicks through here, they show up in the little green box on the right. And then when you like the way the choices that you've made, then you can click on the green button that says Search Database. And so it takes all the things that you've clicked and brings up a results page for you. So there is help there through these uh, subject headings. Not all of our health databases have these. CINAHL is one. You can see that's an example I used from there. But uh, a couple of the others use the medical subject headings from the National Library of Medicine, which we talked about uh, with Medline. And so it does the same thing. You can type in your word here. I use diabetes. You see we have some options uh, that we could select from uh, underneath the search boxes, or we can click and uh, check the subject headings. And the medical subject headings work very much like the headings that we see on the other slide. You know, you have the term that you search. You can click and you get all these various uh, subheadings underneath. You can pick what you want and then uh, go and search the database based on the options that you've made. So what you see here uh, at the bottom uh, image on this slide there is a link that you can hit so that you kind of get a hierarchical tree. So kind of going from the most general down to the very specific. So again, if you took a broad subject like diabetes or aging as a topic to uh, write a report on or a paper on, uh, doing seeing this hierarchical tree like this when you do the suggested subject headings uh, helps you narrow down your topic to something that would be more manageable to do in terms of research. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping this is coming out uh, clear to you. A lot of this I think you can hear about. But what we really hope is that if you have a desire for this kind of information that you will kind of go in these different uh, databases and kind of explore and see what's there and play around with them and uh, see what all you can do. And if you get stuck, what do you do? You call us at the State Library. You can call us using our toll-free number if you're out in the state or our direct line. Uh, here in Frankfurt, 502-564-8306, or you can use the Ask a Librarian email service and type in a question or tell us about a problem you're having, and we can respond to that and help walk you through what's going on. Okay, <coughs> so there are other things you can do when you are searching in any EBSCO database. We talked about using uh, the subject headings list. 
and the medical subject headings. Uh, one or two of the databases have a thesaurus. Now that's a term you might remember from school. Thesaurus is a list of terms and gives a list of synonyms. So some de databases essentially have a vocabulary list that they use in putting articles into their database. So if you use their thesaurus, use their terms, you might get more or a more efficient or better effective use in searching. Some of the uh, databases include a dictionary if you're just looking uh, for something for a uh, description or a definition. You can uh, link just in the dictionary. You have the option to search multiple terms using AND, OR, and NOT. Those are called Boolean operators. Uh, field codes uh, are just, just simply a short two-letter abbreviation that helps you search faster. For example, if I was looking up Kim McDaniel as an author in an EBSCO database, I could use the AU code for author in the search box, and then I could type in Kim McDaniel after that. And that's just a short way of, uh, of uh, shortcut way of searching a person's name. And each database has their own list of codes. You know, article title, journal title, uh, dates, uh, uh, company. You know, each has their own, and you can find that list of codes by clicking on the help screen for each different database. So let me see where I am here. OK. So another thing that can be useful is something called cited references. Cited references means uh, are, this is a term that connects users to additional information about the article that you have found. So like when you pick on a, see an article on your results page, you'll see in the red box it says cited references and it has 10 in parentheses. That means that there are 10 other articles in EBSCO databases that have used this article, Workplace Violence and Safety Response, as part of their references. And so if you click on it, then you down at the bottom you see a list pops up of what those other 10 articles would be. So sometimes if you are, are looking a, about a particular topic, I think I did workplace violence was the search I used on this one, then you can kind of find related information by looking at these cited references. The key thing that's good, too, about all of these being EBSCO databases is that you can search one database at a time, or you can search multiple ones. Since a lot of them deal with some of the same topics, you know, you don't want to limit yourself to just one. You want to see whatever is out there, and you can do that. So when you get to the page uh, for the individual database, you look up at the top of the page, and you see an option there that says Choose Databases. And that means if you want to search more than one, click on it. So you get this page, and essentially what you do, you can choose to search all the databases in EBSCO. Or you can go through and click the ones that you want to include. So down here, you can see I clicked on everything that I thought might have medical or health information, uh, including the ones that we talked about today. I added CINAHL. And I also included academic search, which has a lot of uh, a broad variety of topics, including health and medicine in it. So you click what you want, or click on Select All, and click OK, and then you can uh, search 
for what you're looking for. Okay, so we've done our search and we get a page that looks similar to this. So on this page, what I did, I searched for osteoarthritis. So in the number one box, this is where you type in your search terms that we saw on the other slides. Um, down below where it says uh, number two, this is where we can limit it to the kinds of sources we want. So my choice here was to limit it to magazines. In the box number three, this is where we pick on or where we can limit it if we want to see articles that just have the text that we can click on uh, as we find them. And then on four, the box uh, number four, if we put our cursor there on the magnifying glass, then uh, a preview screen window pops up and we sort of get a little summary of uh, the article that we are interested in. Okay, so we go through and we pick one that we want to look at. So in my case, in my search, I wanted to look at the article called Crazy About Collagen. Okay, so the, here on the individual record, we see lots of details. Uh, that's sort of the default view. We can do kind of a less detailed record. Um, but I think at this point, you probably want to see as much as you can at one time. So uh, we see the author and subject terms up the top. There's an option uh, to do other searches uh, with similar terms. Some articles, you may see a logo in the left-hand column. This one doesn't. but uh, the periodical logo, if you clicked on it, would take you to maybe the issue if it was full text for this article or give you an opportunity to search other years, other months in the same article, uh, in the same journal article or magazine title. Uh, there may be a table of contents. Uh, that you can look through if it's an article from a book or an encyclopedia. Over here on the right hand side of your screen you see you have a list of about 10 icons. These are your tools on what you can do with the information. You can print the article, you can save it to a folder for later use. Uh, there's an icon that lets you email it to yourself or to someone else, uh, a place where you can uh, save it. Uh, there's information that lets you retrieve the citation information. Uh, let you, there's one where you can export it to some other type of uh, management software, uh, an icon where you can uh, include a note about the article in your personal account, links uh, if you want to create a bookmark. Okay, so lots of options. This particular article comes both in HTML and PDF. Okay, so which is best? Here's a look at the PDF full text view. So we click on that, then we see the article pop up and we get the way it looks in the journal or the magazine. So the time to use PDF is when you are going to print this out because the layout, the page layout is important in, in that case. 
So um, you get the images, you know, any tables or graphs are going to uh, print as well, and they'll be uh, on the pages uh, as they were published, as opposed maybe to being placed at the end of the article or being excluded altogether. Uh, notice on the right hand side you still have that list of icon tools there where you can save it, print it, um, you can download it, email it, uh, again uh, you can click on get the reference to include in a bibliography and of course within Adobe PDF you have options uh, to print and save the article as well. Okay, HTML, if you choose that option for full text, then this is what you see. Notice this looked very similar to what the medication database looked like. Um, HTML is better if you are going to be reading the article on the web, if you're going to include it as um, something that is uh, going to be on a website. Um, sometimes uh, it's better than using PDF because HT, uh, PDF doesn't work necessarily in all different kinds of devices and browsers. Uh, it's better for people who have vision impairments. They say it's easier to use this in order to share information. So again, you have table of contents. You can click, use the shortcuts. There's an option to have it read to you. Notice at the top there's an option to translate it to a different language. Okay, we're getting close to uh, our time limit here. So just briefly want to explain that you do have the option to set up an account where you can save information and any articles that you have found useful for your research until your project is done. You can go in and there is a, a link where you can set up your account. Essentially you just provide the information there and submit the form. Uh, if you have an account, you'll see it up the top where it says sign in in that blue bar across the top. Um, so you have the option to look at your search history and save it for further use. If you want to save searches, you, there's a form that pops up when you click on that link. You choose the database you're searching in. You pick what it is you uh, want to do, if you want to save the search or create an alert, and that shows up uh, in when you sign in to your account. You can do that for a specific article you want to save. You can do it if you want to be alerted when new issues of a journal or magazine are added to the database. You can set up an alert to be notified. You can save information in folders. Uh, you can just click save or there's an option down at the red arrow there. You can see where you can kind of customize folders and organize the information based on topics. So I have one for diabetes, I have one for osteoarthritis. And in those I've saved articles that I can go back and look at whenever I need to instead of searching for them all the time. We're kind of wrapping up here. Remember, we can help. Uh, everything that you needed to know is in that drop-down menu under State Employees. Remember, you can call us directly by phone, or you can use the Ask a Librarian service if you're experiencing a problem. Or if you found an article that isn't full text, we can help you get that from another library. Just use the Ask a Librarian service and copy and paste the information from the database. You see there are outcomes after foot surgery. Just uh, you know, take that information and plug it in to uh, in the box where it says your request. 
and just fill out the form with your work information and click on it and it comes to us and we get to work on getting it for you. So there's our information if you run into any problems with your account or the database. So uh, that concludes our training for today. Just want to remind you to look at the training events questions. Again, when you're ready, click on the red X in the upper right hand corner to leave the classroom. Have a good day, everyone. Stay dry.